welcome everybody to the Magic Beans podcast. We are back again for episode number 99. Goodness me, that is a lot. I am your host tonight, and my name is Shorty, and I have two beans on the line here with me. Tonight we have Chewy. How's it going, mate? Uh, I'm good, mate. How are you? Welcome back. Yeah, pretty good. Yep. Th- thanks for having me back. Thanks for allowing me <laughs> back onto the podcast. <laughs> we ran a poll. Uh, we ran a community yep, poll. Yep. and It was very close. Uh, it was very, very, very close. It came down to uh, opponent match win percentage breakers. But, yep. uh, yeah, you, you just scraped in. You are on the bubble for a while there, though. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't go with we ran a bean poll there. But anyway, we uh, <laughs> we also have... We I don't, also I don't have really crack, like bad jokes. Cracker on the not, line. Not really my thing, man. So, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. How's it going, Cracker? <laughs> Um, good, Shorty. How you doing, mate? Uh, I'm glad I'm to have good. you back. Good. Always like it when you're on the cast. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to hear that I'm uh, wanted by half the people on the, uh, <laughs> the podcast tonight. <laughs> Where's Disco uh, Stu? Right. We need a tiebreaker here. Let's yeah, 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 we no, do. No, no, glad yeah. to have you yeah. back, mate. Glad to have you back. Yes, glad to be here. Uh, yeah, been pretty crazy busy for work lately and, uh, yeah, been uh, working some big hours, but... We are almost at the 100 episodes, and uh, I'm definitely going to be there for that one, so I thought probably should be on here tonight just to make sure we're, we're still on track for the uh, the big episode next week. So You don't want to do a blaster boy and just show up for the, the big events, do you? Yeah, that's fair. No, no. I just disappear off the face of the earth and then, yeah, randomly show up and go, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, I'm still around. Yeah, a wild blaster boy appears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we uh, we do actually have a lot to talk about tonight. There's been a few things going on, uh, and Cracker is back again tonight, which means there's definitely something big to talk about, so we will get into Always. that. But before we do, Cracker, seeing as you uh, yeah. you just spoke, you can talk about our awesome yeah. sponsors. Sure, love to. Uh, Josh and Pat's MTG Bazaar, they are the awesome sponsors of our podcast in the Magic Beans tournament series. They're a Facebook auction page. And you can buy sweet physical magic cards from them. They run nightly auctions with lots and lots of different cards. And it's super easy. You just go through a bid on and you can win. You can get awesome cards at just really, really good prices. They're quite often a long way below what you would get them for if you were trying to get them from a store just directly, which is unreal. Um, and yeah, they, they give us prizes and, and support and they, they really help us do what we're able to do and, and put on the the wonderful things that we're doing at the moment. So go check them out, Josh and Pat's MTG Bazaar uh, Facebook auction page, and um, yeah, let them know the Bean sent you. Very good. All right, so the first thing we're going to get into tonight, you guys spoke about it on the podcast last week. We had the World Championships on the weekend, and uh, we have a new new world champion. It was not the previous winner, as my prediction was. Uh, I think he started mm-hmm. off at a doing all right, uh, old PV DDR, but uh, the wheels might have fallen off as he got further into the event and, and didn't quite make it to the top four. So, uh, yeah, we have a, a new world championship. So, Chewy, do you want to give us a bit of a rundown on what we saw at Worlds? Well, first of all, we saw some in-drafting, uh, in-client in client drafting. I'm so excited I can't get the words out. Uh, <laughs> so, so, like a, a custom draft, like effectively, you know, you can get eight of your friends and draft that. So, uh, hopefully that was a, uh, a bit of a, a prelude to a, uh, an upcoming, uh, enhancement to the arena. We weren't, we weren't sure if, if they were actually going to do it in client because the last worlds they drafted paper. And then, like, imported their deck list. Oh, so that, that's that right. And a then bunch, of, bunch of issues, but obviously that, they couldn't do do that this time. Yeah, there was that controversy with um, Mengu, I think. Yeah, Mengu, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we we launched into into the draft, and then after the three rounds of draft, we moved into many many rounds of, of standard, and there were lots of mountains and lots of islands played over the uh, over the course of the uh, the weekend. A few forests. In there, and maybe even a planes or two. Not a lot of swamps. A, a couple, definitely a supporting color here. But uh, we had a uh, a top four eventually, uh, which was uh, Andre Strasky with the Is it Epiphany, uh, not Ian Jan Merkel with the the Grixis deck, <laughs> uh, Jay Depraz <laughs> with the uh, Team of Treasures, Yuta Takahashi with the uh, the Is it Dragons as well. And I think that's the fourth. Yes, it is. And, uh, eventually, uh, even though Utah went 03 in the draft portion, 
uh, vi- didn't lose a game, didn't lose a, oh, sorry, probably lost a game, but didn't lose a match for pretty much the rest of the weekend with the, the Is It Dragons deck and was eventually crowned our 2021 world champion. So, uh, that's a fair effort to go from 03. Uh, if I started a tournament 03, you know, I'm pretty much written off. You know, I'm taking my bat and ball and going home. And I'm that <laughs> tilted, right? Uh, but absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Utah, I guess, yeah, an inspiration there to uh, to take that down. And, uh, you know, not not exactly against your local F&M field. Some pretty epic no. uh, competition there. So um, congratulations to Utah Takahashi. And, you know, a bit of emotion showed. Uh, you were watching the... The replay of the the moment that uh, that they had uh, sewn up that title, and it's uh, yeah a, a nice bit of emotion, which is something you don't see you know a huge amount of in you know esports in general, let alone Magic. So uh, great job to uh, to Yuta and to you know everybody else. So uh, I yeah. don't think any of us tipped Takahashi as our our, our favorite for the uh, no. for the event. Like he's a he's definitely a well-known player. Like I I I am aware of Yuta Takahashi. He's he's very very well known for playing fairies in modern. Uh has basically been playing fairies in modern for as long as modern's been around and so he's yeah, he's he's very much known as, as that even when fairies is not good, he's still playing fairies. He's won multiple grand prix modern GPs yeah, with yeah. fairies, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so just love, absolutely loves that style. I'm, I'm really hoping, obviously, he's going to get to do a uh, invitational card or, or world champion card, as we've seen from uh, PVDDR and uh, uh, what was his name? Happy Dominguez. That's the one. Uh, so I'm really hoping that they let him do a fairy with flash and and some sort of bil- uh, ability. Like his his uh, handle on Twitter is Vendillion. So yeah, de- definitely want to definitely want wizards to. <laughs> let him do what he's going to want to do <laughs> yeah. are we when he going, designs that card. Are we going back to Lawn at some point in the roadmap? I'm assuming not at some point, of. but not next year. Uh, <clears> well, they, they do seem to take a while for the invitational cards to come out because obviously they're you know designing sets like a year and a half in advance. So I don't know. Maybe we'll see it in like the second or last set next year. Maybe. Just shuffle the shuffle the deck, wizards. Get get bring Lawn forward ahead of whatever else you had, and just give this man a fairy. <laughs> I you mean, you, you can put fairies in in just about anything. Like, yeah, or we've got fairies in standard at the moment. There's a whole whole bunch of them, so I don't I don't think it's going to be that hard for them, for them to slot one in. It would just be really cool to see. I want to see a fairy that starts off as an O three and then somehow levels up to a, like a something. Want to get ten four or something in the end, so <laughs> yeah. that would be epic, right? Yeah, 11, 11 three because yeah. he didn't lose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, right. I, I, sure. Yeah, so, so if, <laughs> a fairy that just yeah, with, when it gets so many counters on it, it just turns into a giant thing and 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 takes <laughs> over. So that now that's flavor right there. That would be that'd be yeah, yeah. that'd be awesome. All those giant that's fairies, all, that's, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. So did did you get to watch much of the coverage, Cracker? Again, not as much as I would like, but yeah. I did get to see a bit. Um, you know, it's a little difficult. The timing is a bit awkward for some of that and uh, children and the like. But yeah, they did. They did a really great show. I, I've initially and like with the the you know choose your champion thing that Wizards ran, I picked PV. Yeah, same. and then Chewie and I, when we were covering the deck lists last week, he was on mono green, and I was like, I don't pick <laughs> PV anymore. <laughs> no. I pick Andre Strasky. <laughs> yeah, and Strasky ran the tables. Yeah, man. he he absolutely crushed falls. It was he played ridiculously well all weekend. He was ten and zero leading into the top four, and just. Was on an absolute heater, so little, little disappointed that he couldn't kind of, you know, make it all the way through. But um, yeah, there's there's just some really, really good magic. I know, you know, there's a lot of people who are sick of epiphanies and you know, double epiphanies <laughs> and things. But the uh, the games were really interesting to me. I really enjoyed it. You know, there's a lot of skill involved maneuvering to that point where you can just kind of take over and and knowing, you know what spells you need to counter and, and when to hold them. And, you know, like there, there's a pretty good dance that goes on there. So I, I personally found it really interesting. That to me is more interesting than just, you know, smashing giant green creatures into someone's face. But that's, you know, just a personal preference thing. So I liked it. Yeah. 
yeah, I've, I've watched again a little bit of the coverage, not not heaps of it. It was, you know, it's sort of during the prime part of the day for us when uh, we're doing stuff with kids, so it makes it a little bit hard. Uh, but yeah, it was some really really tight matches being played, as as you said, Cracker. A lot of play in terms of what to allow through and what, and knowing what to counter on that sort of stuff. But so many games would just get to a point where it's like, oh, you've run out of counter spells. Okay, I'm just going to. Uh, I'm going to iteration, galvanic iteration, and then I'm going to cast the second galvanic iteration to copy my... So that gets copied, and then I'm going to uh, Alrun's Epiphany. So now I've got like four turns and a whole bunch of birds, and you're just dead. (laughs) And it's like, I I don't see that as a huge problem. I guess that sort of leads us almost into the, the next topic is... Mm-hmm. I don't see that as a huge problem. Like that's literally you need ten mana to to do that, and your opponent needs to have nothing in hand. It's basically like a really long, slow combo finish for, I, for a deck. I, I mentioned that last week on the cast. Yeah, because I'd been playing it. it. I enjoyed playing the the is it turns deck because it, it yeah it felt like you were solving that puzzle. You know, you either had to assemble the 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 puzzle before your opponent killed you or you had to actually resolve it and as someone who you know doesn't mind the, uh, playing a combo deck every now and then it absolutely felt like that but just in that sort of slower more controlling way and i i really did enjoy that and yeah i i think you know people don't like that sometimes when that happens and we saw you know recent bannings of you know time warp in historic and and stuff but so this precedent for you know kind of removing this this sort of thing from the from the meta but honestly i i don't think that is an issue there's so many ways to beat the uh that yeah the, like the hard thing with this this version is they like if your opponent gets to eight mana and they cast the galvanic iteration first you're basically stuffed like if you've got one counter spell in hand you cannot prevent them from having an extra turn because you can either you can counter the galvanic iteration and now you're out of counter spells and then they just cast their extra turn and they get their extra turn or you can let the galvanic iteration resolve and then they cast Elrond's Epiphany and you can counter the Elrond's Epiphany but they still get the copy and that's what it's kind of like the what we saw with the Saltai Ultimatum you know once that once they hit that Saltai Ultimatum you, you kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't with whatever you pick <laughs> to put back in their library. It's just not going to end well for you. And the main complaint I've heard from people is the the birds that you get <laughs> from <laughs> from Alrond's Epiphany. It's by by creating two creatures, it just gives you you know two chump blockers, and then when you're able to turn those two cre- two flying creatures into four or six, they end the game very very quickly. And that that's what people have the have seem to have the issue with. So, hey, people with the issue. Yeah. A seven mana sorcery is a powerful effect. Wow. Yes. Oh <laughs> my <laughs> gosh, I am yeah. flabbergasted. I know that's so. So for me, this uh, people hate blue, and, and I, I really people like. I honestly believe that. Blue. <laughs> not, n- not not everyone, but like if you play um, a blood chief's thirst and you kill someone's night pack ambusher right they're like oh okay you got me yeah unlucky never mind my creature's dead if i cast juari disruption and counter it people are furious <laughs> there's, there's yes. a i don't understand of- there yeah. is a disconnect for whatever reason yeah. that people have between the fact that blue's counter magic is just removal spells guys we're just doing it on the stack instead okay and look i, I obviously i love countering things I, I like that's fun to me like you know it's it's not necessarily any more skillful than knowing when to time your black removal spell or your your shock or or whatever your it is green your, fight spell you know right? you, yeah. You, 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 yeah exactly your blizzard brawl but to yeah. think that the thing that annoys me is like when as a as someone who's been playing delver admittedly he knows it's bad at the moment <laughs> if i yes, let yes, it is. No, no, but i can attest to that <laughs> if, and that that's fine like if i let if I let a Seeker's Chariot resolve, I am as dead as if you are letting a Alrond's Epiphany resolve. Yeah. Right? It is the same thing. It's a four mana thing that makes two creatures on three bodies, right? Like, it's the same thing. But no one is frothing at the mouth about the way that these green cards or, 
you know, take over the game in the same way. Like those resolving without an answer will win just as quickly as an Asika's chariot, as you know, as a Aaron's epiphany. So, yes, it feels bad. I saw, um, you know, Maria and um, Me- oh, I've gone Megan. blank on her name now. Megan, yes, they're like M- Megan. Put it this way: she's like, I'm not stealing your turn. I'm just creating yeah. myself a whole brand new one from extra nothing. One. It wasn't there before. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm just having an extra yeah, it's not mind I didn't slaver. take anything of yours. Yeah, it's not mind yeah, exactly. So, look, I can understand the feels bad. But if I have got the game to a point where I've got nine mana to cast two sorceries or an instant and a sorcery, then I, I should get to win. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Like, the game has to yeah. finish at some point, right? So, how does it matter if it's just like a Seeker's Cherry into Ren and Seven and you're copying, you know, Tree Folk tokens that are five fives and six sixes and, and, you know, like short of a sweeper, they win or, you know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. It's that's, just, that's, it's just that's the perception it. of it. And, and that's, it's as Chewie said, you know, we've saw, we saw Time Warp get banned. We saw, yeah. what was the other one? Nexus of Fate got banned instead. And mm-hmm. people just, they have that perception of, oh, you're taking all of my turns and I, I never get to play the game any further. But really, that's no different to any other combo deck we've seen where some, you know, KCI, someone has a really big long turn and they win the game. But they've had to take a lot of actions to get to that point and get the game state to a point where they can actually do that. And in that whole process, you had plenty of opportunity to stop them from doing that. Exactly. So let's so, let's flip that yeah. flip it on its head for a second, right? Let's just say uh, uh Cracker, I'm I'm playing mono mm. green and you're playing the, yeah. the Epiphany deck. If I, you know, curve out with the you know, the bunch of three threes and chariots and giant tree folk tokens and and kill you on turn five do you do mm-hmm. you go oh i didn't get to do my thing because it's too fast and i never you know you took away my turns because the game ended like you'd never hear the combo or control player complaining about the aggro deck it's a, the people playing the aggro decks complaining about the the other ones and it's it's a you know, perspective, I think, is a really interesting thing. If, if you're upset because somebody's casting 10 mana worth of spells, then, hey, you know, like, get them dead faster, right? It's a... Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think that's part of the complaint at the moment is that there aren't those decks that can get them dead faster. And, uh, like, we are in a small set, small standard at the moment, so we'll we'll see what happens. And, and you know, we'll, that's fair. we'll touch on that in a second about uh, what Wizards have said they're, they're planning on doing with this. But, uh, yeah, like, we will likely see more aggressive creatures getting printed over the next couple of sets, and all of a sudden that pushes those out. And it's like, well, yeah, you, you can play your, uh, you know, your 10 mana worth of, of spells, but if you don't have that board wipe exactly when you need it, you are going to be dead. So we'll see what happens. Speaking of potential bannings and actual bannings, we, uh, we mm-hmm. had an announcement. That was actually this morning, I, I believe, this uh, announcement came out of nowhere. What, are, what have we got here, Cracker? Surprise. That's why I'm on the cast, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Um, and obviously, we're, we're talking specifically about Epiphany because it wasn't banned, right? That that was, you know, one of the things that a lot of people were calling for. We saw a lot of copies in, you know, a lot of the top decks at Worlds and it did, did very well, right? But with the, the upcoming release of Crimson Vow, they've decided to make no changes at this time. So- uh, I look correct move. Ultimately, correct move. I wouldn't be. Su- yeah, I I agree. And you know, you and I said that last week as well. True, we thought that worlds is such a small specific field that it really shouldn't be influencing large scale um, choices around what wizards does. You know, like that's that's not a good metric to use. And they agree, right? You know, that's that's something that they've they've agreed with. And the fact that we've got an, a new set coming out in literally like three weeks or something. <laughs> yeah, it's not long. <laughs> and it's it's going to be packed full of vampires. Vampires are very aggressive creatures. So, like, I would not be surprised at all if we see a really good, like, red-black aggro vampire deck in yep. the wings, which can just exert enough pressure that you don't get to do 10 mana things. Yep. However, historic is a whole different thing. <laughs> just Ooh. just before you move to historic, they did say in their article yes. they are, you know, they-, they are aware of players' concerns about Elrond's Epiphany and sure. the Seeker's Chariot. So, 
they've decided not to make the change, but they're going to evaluate it after Crimson VR comes in. So, yeah, we, we the, may still see They're also aware of people's but, complaints yeah. about the reserve list, but, you yeah. know, that doesn't really make any difference now, does it? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, right. um, historic. What did we see in Historic? <laughs> historic. Tybalt's trickery is banned. Memory lapse is suspended. And Brainstorm is banned from suspended. So, do you want to talk about those first? Or yeah, let's, run let's, through let's start the, with those the and then we'll, we'll get into the All other- right. Other changes. So, so ch- ch- Chewy. Yeah. What's the deal with trickery? People were putting Ugin into play on turn two and people were getting upset by that, I think. Yeah. So, it's a, you know, it's it's a combo deck that does crazy things on turn two, which is very different from turn 10. But <laughs> it's a, uh, you know, you're not really playing magic uh, in that sense. You're... Uh, doing a bit of a, a lucky dip and you're, you know, aggressively mulliganing. And it's a, you know, if you're playing trickery, you're either looking for, you know, cheap wins on Arena Ladder or you're just having fun trolling your opponents, basically. And look, I could see that being fun for a short period of time. Uh, so, you know, good on them. But because it doesn't really play magic, this deck at all, um, there's a uh, you know, valid reason to to ban it for the for the health of the format. We've seen it banned in in modern, and whilst the giant Eldrazi Titan that you're putting into play, or um, giant Planeswalker, or whatever it might be, may be different in this format. It's kind of the same trick, Uri, and it's a uh, something that's just yeah, gotta go. Like dumb card, hap- not sad to see it go. Uh, we do have an upcoming. A historic event which we'll talk about and trickery was on my uh on my short list to uh you know to to troll <laughs> for for a little bit so that's uh, i gotta find <laughs> something else to play but yeah uh have you guys played against trickery at all no or i mean I've, i haven't played historic i think since their last historic event so <laughs> okay <laughs> got uh, got no idea but appa- so apparently like they've said in their article it got a cascade spell uh, recently, throw it throws of chaos, and and that's just made it uh, much more consistent. So yeah, not, not surprising. I, I, don't, I don't think it was a huge meta share, but it's just a a style of play that they don't really like, and they've said it's pretty unlikely that <laughs> trickery is going to be a, a combo that they actually want in historic going forward. So yeah, it's easier just to get rid of it now. It feels like show and tell, right? Like if you've ever played Legacy. There's the the sneak and show decks that play the the giant things, and in in Legacy as early as turn one, but often on turn two, um, you just go like show and tell, show us your best thing, and you know someone might go, oh, here's my Delver of Secrets, and it's like, well, here's my Emrakul, right? So yeah, uh, it, it's just it's not fun or in any real meaningful way interactive magic unless you're playing counter magic. Uh, so yep. yeah, it's a yeah narrows the format too much. So yep. don't, don't mind seeing it go. And uh, memory lapse cracker. Speaking of counter magic, yeah, Me- yeah, I know this this one. I don't know, man. <laughs> they're, they're just out for us blue players. They just ban brainstorm. Uh, memory lapse is one of the blue counter target spell. If a spell is countered this way, put it on top of an owner's library instead of that player's graveyard. So if you've never had someone like burglar rats you or like make you put a card from your hand back on top of your deck it actually like that legitimately does feel really yes. bad like i'm not <laughs> i'm not even gonna try and defend this one have you guys ever played uh, wonder yes. oh that's such a good card so for that's, those that's- that you don't know it's a green sorcery that puts two lance on top of their owner's deck and you know you green so you're ramping into it it's so good anyway so good uh, but memory lapse is kind of like that for spells, right? Yeah. So memory lapse was um, the most played blue card in the arena open, and as well as the best of three ladder was their reasoning. And it's yeah, it's interesting. Like particularly if your opponent is mana short, taking their two drop and putting it back on top of their deck, so they don't get to draw landing, and they have to draw that two drop again. And you can just you can kind of bury people with that sort of advantage, um, which is why, you know, it, if it's the most played spell, they're obviously going to look at it pretty hard and uh, I guess enough people complained about it. And there's the rogues deck in Historic as well, which, you know, you put the thing back on top of your library, then I'm going to mill it. 
and and things like that as well. So it's a yeah, it, it has a lot of synergy with the historic format. And, you know, so historic has that sort of combo element. Like some of the control decks have like a big combo finish. So, you know, it doesn't matter if they get the spell next turn because you just need your thing to resolve this turn for you to win or, you know, make it so that spell's pretty much just obsolete um, because you've already resolved your whatever. So I... I yeah, it's funny. This one is actually closer to taking someone else's turn away. Yeah, it very much is. Like you, you, a phrase that you'll hear people say in Magic is "time walking your opponent," and that's mm-hmm. you know they 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 play their whatever their their spell is on turn two or three or whatever, and bouncing it back to their hand, or in this case, which is even worse, putting it on top of their library is effectively like you getting an extra turn because they're not drawing an and and different card the next turn they're drawing the same card and then they're then in that position of well, okay well do i just cast the same card again and and i'm kind of set back a turn whereas you've had your turn and got an extra draw so you know we've just been or had people complaining about a, a seven mana extra turn well this is pretty much a two mana extra turn which is a card that exists and is worth a hell of a lot of money. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot, lot more than memory lapse. But so, yeah, it's a uh, hypothetical. Like they, question. they do say in their article that it's it's going to be hard to see how this is going to impact the format because it's not a obvious combo card or anything like that. But it's likely to improve diversity, which which I sort of agree with. I think it was the de facto uh, blue spell that you play in in decks that are able to play blue. So mm-hmm. before we move on, we haven't had enough tangents tonight. With memory lapse gone, if wizards were to do another uh, historic anthology or whatever they call them, do you think remand would be problematic in historic? Remand is very powerful, very yes. very good. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like re- remand would be would basically fill the slot of memory lapse. It would become the de facto yeah is uh, it, blue is it, spell you play I, if you're able. I, I if you're think playing you're more like, likely to see mana leak, right? Yeah, yeah, I would. I'd agree with that. Yeah, I but think having who, a, who knows. A, I mean, who, which is who, nowhere near. Whoever as good. would have thought we'd have brainstorm in in a story. What about so. mana drain? Yeah. Can we get well, that? We, <laughs> surely we don't have brainstorm in no, historic anymore. No, no, we don't. Yeah, I, I have four I wild cards that, back. <laughs> well, I will have soon. Hey, congratulations! <laughs> you, you do now. If yeah. you had, um, yeah, if you have memory lapse, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to wait a bit before you get your your wild cards back for that one. But um, yeah, brainstorm is gone. Oh, I am shocked. And appalled that I mean I'm a little bit sad. <laughs> yeah, but, sad that we don't get to cast yeah, it again. But it's, co- it's correct, it definitely, correct. No, definitely no one correct. saw this one sticking around. <laughs> but there's no fetch lands. It's it's the age old argument that's completely wrong. <laughs> yep, turns out it doesn't matter. <laughs> yep, yep. So yeah, brain, brainstorm gone. I think I think that's a good thing, and I, I don't think anybody thought it was coming back off the suspension list. So good to see that we're getting our wild cards back on that and. I don't think we'll see memory lapse come back either. So uh, no. if you've got those uh, more wild cards coming your way. So they did something else, uh, Cracker, they with did. this announcement. Do you want to go through that one? I do, yeah. So they did rebalancing. So as part of the um, jumpstart, right, the most recent jumpstart set, there were some cards that were released that were arena-only cards. Uh, and so they, they're doing rebalancing, which we see in other digital trading card games. What do we call them? <laughs> Did, like digital card games. And things like that. <laughs> digital card games. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's not trading, right? Because no. uh, But um, Davriel was withering and Davriel's Soul Broker, or Davriel's Soul Broker, now only affects target creature and opponent controls. So I'm sure if you've played some Historic recently, you know that this was an infinite combo with Vespalark. Uh, they were cards that gave um, per- per- permanent... Minus two, minus one, or minus two, minus three, or whatever minus it was. Minus one, to- minus two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To a, a creature, and Vespalark could, um, if you cast it on that, you, you could loop it. So, with, like, a Blood Artist in play, you could kill your opponent. Or, if you didn't have, like, that in play, then you would actually just draw the game. Because yes. <laughs> Vespalark would just loop itself infinitely, and the game doesn't progress, and eventually it just cracks the sads. So- yeah. Ves- Vespalark's was- ability was not a, a you may return a creature. It was just no. return target creature. And if there was no other creatures in your graveyard, the only one that would be there would be Vespalark, and you had to bring it back. So, yep. it just infinitely- yep. I, I actually- I did see- some people on stream do that. We're like, well, I'm about to lose or 
<laughs> and they would just like draw the game yeah. instead of losing it. And, you know, just it's it's a pretty silly thing to have happen. Uh, so because these are only printed or they, they, they only exist on Arena, well, they've been able to kind of tweak the numbers here. They've also done some buffs, but no one actually cares about those. So I'm just going to e- ignore them. Um, I, I, I legitimately don't think they matter. <laughs> um, uh, face, faceless they- agent might matter. Like fa- faceless yeah, agent was a sure. It's gone. It's gone from a two two one to a two two. Yeah, that's like that's a it. and what they say in their article. So it's a three colorless or uh, three generic two one. That's a, a changeling. But when it enters the battlefield, you seek a creature card of the most prevalent creature creature type in your library. So it does get played in uh, tribal decks. But being sure. a, being a two one, it just dies to everything. So. A slight buff to a 2-2, like, it'll be the sort of thing where they go, okay, making it a 2-2, does it see more play? And then that gives them more data for other tweaks they potentially want to do. Yeah, but I guess if you were in the market for that already, like, you're a tribal deck, you've got pretty specific requirements, so you're probably either already playing it or, you know, it's it's high on the thing. Um, the Davriel cards have just killed a deck. Right, like that, the Vesperlight combo was legitimately, you know, pretty decent deck from from what I saw, and there's just stone unplayable now. Yep. So, what do we think about that? Oh, and worth noting here is because they haven't taken, uh, they haven't banned or suspended any of these cards. There's no compensation. You you don't get anything. You just there's no notification going to be made on Arena either. So you don't even like if you didn't pay attention to this announcement and you just logged in to play some historic. Tomorrow, well, unlucky because you're going to go to target your Vesper Lark and nothing's going to happen. So I, I think that that's an interesting choice as well. Yeah, it feels bad, Ben. Uh, they should have some sort of uh, notification in the client when you log on, surely. But yeah, I would, I would have thought there would be, but yeah, yeah. Apparently, they're not doing it. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, I, I think that's bad. Tomorrow comes. after the update. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, you know, w- this was always a possibility when there's arena only cards, and this is the. The benefit of uh, having, you know, digital objects and, you know, as we said, we've seen this in other uh, digital card games and and I like it and this is always a problem with, um, you know, overpowered cards and they did that event. Uh, yeah, where they changed like Oko and um, yeah. Teferi and stuff yeah. like up the mana cost yeah. and, and changed Oko's ability to be a minus instead of a plus. Yeah, and agent of treachery and, and all of that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, you know, you can do that on arena. Uh, you can't do that in cardboard. And I guess that's the, the downside of, of cardboard. And, you know, all of the bandings that we've seen, you know, if brainstorm, you know, they added an extra mana to it or they made it only look at two cards or something like that. Right. Um, you know, they could digitally fix the card, but you know, it doesn't, it's not brainstorm then. So that you can't do it because it's a physical card that exists. Hmm. So it's a, uh, you know, that's always going to be the tension with having a, a digital client for a uh, a cardboard physical game. But uh, I like this. I you know I hope they they do more of this um, tweaks and and such. Uh, I what I hope they don't ever do is you know have something that is different on Arena to what it is on you know your tabletop. So as long as they don't make that departure, then um, do what you want with these cards. Like enjoy exploring the design space and push your cards or balance the cards. And um, you know, there's no difference to you know making a uh, you know a faceless agent have one extra point of toughness to you know making a hero in Dota having more uh, more hit points or you know a, a gun in you know battlefield doing more damage per bullet or something. Right, so. Every game that's digital can do this, so why not? I don't have an issue yep. with it. Yeah, and we speculated that this was them dipping their toe into that that sort of field and seeing how it goes. And as we said, when when this got announced, Historic is the perfect place to do it because it is a digital-only format and it's not tied to paper. They've already got cards that are only only printed in in Historic, and it's not getting not ever going to get played in a in a paper format. So. Why not? And yeah, this this is probably the first of many that we'll see. And I'm assuming when we get for uh, future sets that print directly into historic and don't go to paper, that we'll see more of this sort of stuff and and see them tweak things. And 
yeah, like that's when that combo came out of, of the Davriel's Withering and Davriel Soulbroker and Vespalark, people were just like, why did you, you know, you, you put these two cards together or these three cards together in the same set? Why would you do that? And now it's like, okay, well, it's easy to fix. You've got an easy fix for that problem and they've done it and they'll get to see the, uh, the results from that, see people's reactions and, you know, use that to, uh, decide what they do in the future with with more of these things. So, yep, I like it too. I think it's pretty cool. So, I do. T- I think that the ability to tweak things is great. Like, uh, take t Trickery, for example. You could actually just straight up fix that card again the same way, where you just change it where you can't counter your own spells. If t Trickery said counter target spell an opponent has cast, right, then it just wouldn't see play. No, it'd be an awful, yep. awful But the fact that you can target your own <laughs> yeah. thing is is like the- yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. It'd be completely- you know, it'd be like a- like a chaos warp or something like that, where you, you spin the wheel hoping- because it's a red counter spell, there should be a downside to it, right? Like, that's that's just how the, the red chaotic counter magic has worked in the past. So, um, I, I really do like this idea. As for what people are saying, I saw a bit of that and- it's it's a mix because it always is. The the people, w- what I saw and I think is really valid is that we have no way of recouping the sunk cost uh, in terms of what we've got going on for for the the Vespalark combo deck. So there's there's kind of nothing you can do there. You are now stuck with that deck without being able to you know get your wild cards back. Whereas in games like Hearthstone, then you know, you, you have the ability to dust. And I think that that's possibly one of the- It, it raises the, the nature of the way we we work with Arena in terms of the, the economy we have and the fact that you can't just, you know, go, all right, well, he, here we are. I've- My card's been nerfed. My deck doesn't function anymore. And, you know, we at that point, we have to just suck it up. And, and spend more gems. So, yeah. Yeah. That, I think that's I, the, the, the tricky part I guess part the, there. the only, and I'm not, I'm not saying this is the right sense, but the only justification there is if you've played this busted combo deck that's just been nerfed, you've probably won a few matches and you might have, you know, earned some, some prizes and some, you know, gone up the ladder. So when it resets, they give you a bunch of, you know, gold and whatever you get. Um, so you may have actually already, uh, cashed in, in that sense. Uh, but for some, if you built the deck two days ago, then that's, that's the big feels bad. But if you've been playing this deck for the last few months, uh, and with any success, you probably have gotten your, you know, gems worth, your money's worth in that time. Uh, so that's a, um, you know, it's just like paper magic. If they, you know, they banned Mox Opal, uh, I've just got Mox Opals sitting in a box now, right? I, I don't. I, you know, I could sell them, absolutely, but not for what I got for them. Uh, so even if, and dusting's the same thing. It's, you, you're not going to get the equivalent investment on that. So it's, it's. No, that's, that's completely right. But you have the option to turn around and sell Mox Opal. Yeah, absolutely. I do, but. You, you can go, all right, well, Affinity is no longer a deck. There are people who play in Pauper. There are people who play in Commander. Like there are other avenues. There are people who want to collect all the different sweet variants, right? Whereas on Arena, it's just like, well, oh, sorry, unlucky. Yeah, but you know, a rare wild card isn't worth eighty bucks either. So you know, if there's the, no, it, it's, it's a different economy. So yeah, look, I'm not saying I 100 percent agree. We should have some dusting. Absolutely, let us let us get rid of the the cards that we're supposed to have. You know, this are. Um, historic format to use in, and then you've printed cards specific for this. You know, it's a whole nother topic of conversation, absolutely. And it <laughs> let's does. Not, it, let's not go yeah. down that rabbit hole tonight. But it's, Sorry. Yeah, it doesn't seem. <laughs> well, we were talking be- about like what people's reaction was to yeah. to this type of change, and and that's the one that you know seems the the most valid. Well, valid mate, not is not the right word, but the the one that kind of gets brought up again around. You know the 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 economy oh, based on the fact that but think of your unplayable faceless agents cracker that are now two twos. So it's just <laughs> exactly so much better. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. so yeah, but no, I, I actually I do agree with you. I was just trying to add that uh, you know a counter perspective to to talk through it, but we could talk through it for ever. But uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things. So where does that leave uh, historic now? Yeah, well, we'll, uh, we'll have a bit of a look at some historic decks. Uh, we, we'd sort of intended on, 
uh, talking about historic decks tonight anyway. As we mentioned a bit earlier, we do have our one-day historic event coming up next weekend. So we were just going to sort of go through the historic metagame and talk about the decks, but uh, it all got shook up. <laughs> and so now half the decks aren't, aren't valid, but we'll, we'll still have a bit of a chat about those. So, Chewy, I think you had a deck that you want to talk about. I don't know how uh, how relevant it is now, but uh, we can have a bit of a chat about how it's going to look going forward. Yeah, so thinking about our uh, our event coming up, and you know, I don't know about you guys, but I haven't played a, a lot of historic since no. our last <laughs> event. Uh, yep. So I went I went looking for some you know interesting decks because the last few events I've either played uh, Gruel Agro or the uh, Colorless Artifact deck, and I was just looking to spice it up a little bit. Uh, you know, what's spicy? Okay, I can't play Trickery anymore. Uh, what else is about there? And I, I happened across uh, a Jess guy, uh, indomitable creativity deck, which, you know, is nothing really new, uh, in, in historic, but I haven't seen it being played in our, uh, our events. I thought I could give that a go. Uh, I need to secure myself some wild cards, but, uh, so indomitable creativity is really fun to say, but it's a, uh, triple red and X for a sorcery. It says destroy target. X target artifacts and or creatures for each permanent destroyed this way. It's control of it. It's control of reveals cards from the top of his or her library until an artifact or creature card is revealed and exiles that card. Those players put the exiled cards into the battlefield and then shuffle their libraries. So, uh, it's, it's very combo esque. Uh, it's got Sarah's emissary, uh, and, uh, some Nezahol, Nezahol in the sideboard as the only creatures. Uh, it plays the, uh, hard evidence, which, you know, puts a crab into play. It's got some, uh, dwarven mines and some shark typhoons to, to make tokens and then turns those into, you know, big creatures. And it's, it's all very fun. Uh, it's got some, Got some counter magic. Uh, it's got some removal in, you know, lightning helixes and unholy heats, as I said. And yeah, just kind of a, a, a Jess guy board control deck that, uh, you know, stays alive, draws a bunch of cards and then, you know, puts a giant creature into, into play, which is super, super fun. You know, sometimes you get, you know, overrun, you don't draw your cards and sometimes they, they count your big spell, but yeah, super fun, super spicy and, and something that I'm definitely interested in playing. And, you know, if you just go to like the tier list, uh, on, you know, whatever website, you don't necessarily see this, but I actually got this list from a, a top 10 mythic, uh, ranked player. Uh, so, you know, it, it must be good, right? In, in some way, obviously a good player, but yeah, a bit of spice, which I think is what you want out of historic. That's, that's historic. Like when Pioneer first came out, it was a bit of the Wild West. Seeing things like this do, you know, big, splashy, fun stuff. Uh, I'm all about that. I'm interested in playing a deck like this. What about you, Shorty? What are you interested in? Sarah's, Sarah's Emma series is an interesting card as the the top end. I'd, I'd never even seen this card before. It's, it's four white, white, white for a 7-7 seven, seven angel flying. And when it enters the battlefield, choose a card type. You and creatures you control have protection from the chosen card type. So Protection interesting. from creatures. Yeah, but, I mean, obviously you're going to choose whatever's going to help you the best against your opponent. But if you choose protection from creatures and they just have a removal spell, it just dies. <laughs> so, and then you no longer have protection. So I would have thought there would be better creatures to uh, to put into play off of your uh, creativity, but who knows? Uh, the, uh, I mean, last there's, time- there's a hole and then there's, you know, Ugans and then there's, uh, what's the, coma is another option yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, last time we played our historic event, I played Simic Turns, <laughs> and uh, most of that deck is now banned. <laughs> it's your fault. Uh, yeah, probably. And, and I, I really enjoyed playing that deck. It was it was a lot of fun. We had uh, Time Warp and Epiphanies and Brainstorms and, and all that sort of goodness. And yeah, most most of that deck is gone now. So I have no idea what to play. I, I'll probably have a look at the uh, the sacrifice deck. So they've always been fairly strong in historic and and as anyone who's listened to our podcast know I, i've definitely spent a lot of time putting cats in ovens uh not my wife cat the cauldron familiar cats uh, i don't 
think she would fit in an oven. But anyway, let's not go there. Uh, so yeah, I think that deck is still pretty good in uh, in historic. Most of it is just the the stuff we were playing in standard. You know, your cats and your geese and mayhem devils and corvolds, which I've I own all of that stuff. Uh, and you're just sort of adding in adding in a few new cards or, or newish cards, but uh, like thought seas and. Uh, those sorts of things. Uh, a few binding the old gods now, which is a, a pretty good addition. But yeah, just a good solid well, it's mid range, I guess. Uh, I guess you call this deck, which which hate you know I uh, I hate to say and I hate to play, but uh, you do almost have the uh, the combo sort of finish once you once you sort of get your loops going with your your cats and your your mayhem devils and Corvold on the field it's like yeah now nah, this isn't a mid-range deck this this is a combo deck that's that's what i tell myself and helps me to sleep at night so you only I think have that's to get him one hit in with a Corvold and then you know at at like you know 6-6 six, six or something and then the other 14 points of damage with your Cauldron Familiars and your Mayhem Devils, you can yeah, yeah, exactly. you can find that damage pretty quickly. Yep, yep. So there's a couple of different versions of, of that getting around. Like there's a there's the Collected Company, uh, Bolus' Citadel, that's a bit more of a almost like a combo uh, list, uh, running Blood Artists and those sorts of things as well. Uh, I'm not super keen with that because you, you do have uh, the Yorgmoth Thram Physician in, in Historic now. So you can get a bit of a combo going with that and, and you know, sacrificing creatures and just continually bringing them back and, and draining your opponent. And you can sort of win out of nowhere when, when you hit the right combination of creatures off your collector company. And, yeah, Bolas Citadel just sort of lets you power through your deck, uh, gaining a bunch of life as as you go to sort of make up for the life you're losing from, from casting things off the top of your deck. So there's that version. But I, I think if I'm going to play it, I'd be more inclined to play the traditional Trail of Crumbs and, and Corvold and, and that sort of version. So. Yeah, I, I think personal preference and probably a, a metagame call, which we've got no idea about. Yeah. Will definitely play a part in that. But uh, I I would, in a vacuum, I think I agree with you. Like there's the sort of like hard combo version, which is, you know, more powerful. But the, the more mid-range version uh, has more staying power. It's, you know, it can race aggro decks by you know just killing all their stuff uh, and it can just outgrind uh the more controlling strategies with uh you know woe striders and and trail of crumbs and, and things so i i like this type of deck and it, i like that if this type of deck exists and is good in a meta game then the format's probably in a good spot right I've yeah. said that one of the things you you just sort of said then was a point I was going to make is the personal preference. We've we've said this before on the podcast that uh, historic feels a, a lot like modern, and modern very much is. If if you've got a deck that you like, it may not be technically a tier one deck because it's you know really really highly represented in the meta or the, the all the pros are playing it that sort of thing. But if you really like a deck and you enjoy playing it and you know how to play it, you're going to do pretty well with it and. That's that's what I'm seeing in in historic, which is a, a trait from modern. So, you can you can play those pet decks and still do really well. So, what are you uh, like in the look of cracker? Luris. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a few Luruses getting around. A few different versions. Yeah. What what so, what style of Luris? <laughs> I mean, there's two. There's uh, rogues. <laughs> I love yep. rogues, man. Uh, I don't know what replaces the memory lapse now. Maybe we get to play Brazen Borrowers again, uh, which was always a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just got some upgrades from the standard lists. You get Thought Seas and Archmage's Charm and a, and a couple of other things, just better mana. Um, so that one seems like my kind of jam. And um, just Burn as well. It's just Boris Burn. Uh, so you've got Lightning Helix is kind of the only white splash in the main, and then you get like Mana Tithe and Portable Hole and, and a few other um, spicy things in the sideboard that open up, a, you know, like a better sideboard package, which I think would be pretty strong as well. You've just got, there's so many good one drops now, like Beaumont Courier, Dragon's Rage Channeler, Soul Scar Mage, and then just 24 Burn spells. <laughs> yeah, we've got pretty unholy, strong. unholy heat now as well, which is yeah, yes. very, very, very strong. Uh, yeah, we're, like I'm looking at a mono red list here, and uh, when you're only playing two Bone Crusher Giants, you know you've got some pretty powerful cards in your, in I your mean, deck. Th- this one's a Lurus deck, so it's not even playing Bone Crushers. Yeah, okay, yeah. 
But if the, you wanted to go that way, you could absolutely do that as well. What yeah. they what they are playing, and I love this static discharge. Wow, like guerrilla tactics and and uh, accumulated knowledge and and things like that. You know, way back in you know the olden times of magic were good cards, and where they counted the number of cards of that same name in your graveyard. So Static Discharge, one and a red for sorcery, deals X damage to any target where X is three plus the number of charge counters on Static Discharge. Put a perpetual charge counter on this card for each card named Static Discharge in your hand, library, and graveyard. So, yeah, the first Static Discharge does, you know, three damage and then the next one does four you know it's just you're doing a lot of damage very quickly uh you love drawing those in multiples very cool card one of the uh you know arena only ones and it's pretty cool i like it someone's been Definitely. rubbing their socks on the carpet really really fast <laughs> yeah yeah that's right <laughs> yeah uh it's a sorcery that's a shame because you can't um you know if you've been shocked when you go get to get in your car uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a you can't uh get zapped when you try to get in your Cadillac, unfortunately, because it's a sorcery. But yeah, almost, almost. <laughs> Come on, wizards, it's nearly got there. Uh um Is it Phoenix is uh is still sort of kicking around. Obviously we've lost lost Brainstorm, which is uh which is no good, but definitely uh we did see I can't remember what the the card was in it. I can't see it in any of these lists here, but there were a couple of cards that came oh no, nah, that's not it. Expressive iteration that's been around for a while. There was something from the most recent set that uh, people were keen to play in uh, in their Phoenix it's decks. It's the blue white uh, draw two, discard two. Ah, oh, yeah, the the faithless looting. Yep, that's so the one. Played, uh, played faithful Jeskai, mending, yeah. I think it's called. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, but I mean, you you do just have faithless looting. Oh uh, no, it was well. the what's the uh, the single blue instant. You can put the card in your... Oh, like, consider. Like, consider, that's the one. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah instead yeah. of opt. So, yeah, that's yes, that's definitely. the card that I was thinking of. Or uh, either instead of opt or with opt. But, yeah, I think that, that card is definitely a, an upgrade for is it Phoenix. So, might might have to take a, a bit of a look at that. Playing Delver mm-hmm. in Phoenix? Uh, uh, probably not. <laughs> Delver's just not, it's just not good enough. <laughs> Uh, it's it, it like I'd like it to be sad but, uh, cracker. You you know yeah. this is a, a an audio only uh, medium, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we can all imagine the sad. It is, cracker. It is this week. But, yeah. Uh, Ooh. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, pl- plenty going on in story. Is there any other decks that you guys are interested in playing? Tempered Steel. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, you know, I. Mentioned Mox over a little bit earlier, and uh, I love me some Affinity. Uh, you know, one of the first decks I owned uh, was was Affinity, and yeah, it's a more budget friendly uh, deck. So it's just got all of the zero and one cost uh, artifact creatures: uh, Ornithopter, Stone Coil Serpent, Ginger Brute, Lockthwain Gargoyle, Constructs with some Steel Overseers, and it's got. A, uh, a bunch of, uh, all that glitters and some tempered steel to make everything big. So it's just like a spew your hand onto the board, aggro deck, make them big and, you know, bash your opponent till they're dead. Uh, very much a linear one trick pony, but, uh, asks a very, very specific question of, do you have a sweeper? And if they don't, then, um, yeah, chances are, you know, they're going to deal 20 very quickly. So, uh, a good option if you don't want to spend too many rare mythic wild cards. Uh, it's a uh, you know, a more wild card friendly uh, deck. I think the only rares are Steel Overseer and uh, Tempered Steel itself. Everything else is uh, commons and uncommon. So yeah, if you're just looking, you know, you want to play, uh, you want a competitive deck, and you know, you, uh, you like turning stuff sideways, then this just might be what you need. So yeah, mm. I'm excited about it. And that. As a, again, similar to modern, there's a ton of budget decks that you can play that are still very, very competitive. So if you're thinking about playing in a historic event and you you know you're sort of putting it off because you you don't have a historic deck, definitely go and check out some of the budget options because there's heaps of decks you can play that are using cards you've probably already got from 
recent standard decks. Uh, it's, uh, you know, some of the rares and mythics, and then just a bunch of commons and uncommons that you can fill the deck out with. And, uh, yeah, just come and have some fun because the matches are always fun. I think the last historic event we played, there was, like, two decks that were the same and just about everything else was was a different deck. So very, very diverse meta, which makes it an awesome fun event and, uh, yeah, pl- plenty of fun to stream and, and just sort of see the, the crazy shenanigans going on. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll give probably more of an update on historic after the event and sort of see where it's at but yeah that event is coming up on the 23rd of october the registrations are open now the link for challenge will be in the show notes as it always is but it's uh over 200 bucks in cash and prizes and the last chance to get some envy points so our current league is finishing up tomorrow night we're recording this on uh on the thursday night all the matches need to be done by tomorrow night, which means we'll be divvying up the points from uh, the group stage of that, and we'll know, uh, you know, sort of who who's right on that cusp and who really needs to play in the historic event to try and get their hands on those last couple of points. I mean, it's pretty much guaranteed that Rolling Royce is going to take out the three points from the historic event, so we can kind of write those off. So really, you're fighting over the two two and one point uh, slots there because. We all, we all know how Rolling Royce goes in those events. Uh, There's also does, Aragoth does well. who uh, just crushed many, many uh, yeah, historic yeah. events as well. So yep, uh, definitely. They, they're kind of the uh, the end bosses for us. So. Yeah, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, that's coming up uh, next weekend for us. That'll be on the, the Saturday. I think, Chewie, you're aiming to stream it. Yeah, yeah that's definitely we'll the plan. Uh, it's on yep. the calendar on the fridge. So yep. uh, hopefully, yeah, it's dependent on... My dependence, obviously, but uh, yes. we all, uh, uh, it's definitely, definitely in the schedule. Yeah. Yep. Uh, if you want an event to play this weekend, there is another arena open, another standard arena open. So that'll be over this weekend. And it's, it's the same deal as it has been the last time. Do you remember, Cracker, what the cost is for the entry on those? Uh, it's like 20,000 gold or something. 20,000 like gold or, yeah, I, I, I don't know actually. I can't remember. It's been a little bit since I looked. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, I think it's 20,000 gold or 4,000 4, gems. Yeah, 4, yeah, that's, that seems that's like right. a lot. Yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah no, I all think the that's details about right, for that. Actually. Yeah, okay. All the details for that are in, in Arena. Like they usually have it advertised sort of on the main thing as you, as you log in. But yeah, it's those events where you can win through to day two and then you're playing for six wins to get a thousand bucks cash or seven wins to get two grand cash, uh, US again. So better value for us Aussies. So, uh, yeah, definitely get in on those. If you're, you know, someone in our community and in our Discord, definitely let us know how you're going. And uh, if you do end up making it through to the, the second day, we want to want to know how you're going so we can cheer you on. Yeah, the, yeah just there's look it up. It's 20,000 or 4,000. Yep, yeah, cool. There's normally plenty of chatter in the events channel or the historic channel on the Discord as well. So even if you're not playing and you just, you know, want to see how the others are going, there's always some good banter in there as well. It's great. Yep, very good. And the last thing we want to talk about is our 100th episode next week. Goodness me. How on earth did we get to 100 episodes, guys? Talent? No, no, it's not that. Um. <laughs> I mean, we're not, we're not actually there yet. So maybe we won't, <laughs> maybe we won't get there. <laughs> Let's not, uh, yeah, count our chickens, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Next next week, next Thursday night, uh, 100th episode, and we thought we'd do something we've talked about doing for a while, which is a live recording, which I guess is no different to normal, but uh, opening it up for the people in our Discord. So we're going to be in a channel that uh, everyone will have access to. We'll have our cameras on so you can see our lovely faces. And, uh, yeah, we'll, you'll be able to chat with us as you're going, uh, you know, send us in questions and all that sort of stuff. So it's going to be a pretty casual, there probably won't be a ton of actual magic talk, but uh, yeah, have a think about the things you want to know from us. You know, we've done, we did our, what was it, our one year or our 50th episode, something like that. We we took a bunch of questions from our listeners, uh, but yeah, if you either didn't listen to that, you weren't around, or you've got other things you want to know, then uh, yeah, jump into the channel and ask away. So it should be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll probably have the channel open from about 8.30 Melbourne time. And, uh, yeah, start recording once we're all ready to go. So get in on that. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It'd be, yeah, something a bit different. And, yeah, we've seen, you know, bringing in the bean sprouts and, and things. It's 
the having the community involved in the cast is is always you know just really really fun so i'm looking forward to yeah being trolled live on the podcast so it's, it's going to be really <laughs> trying, cool. trying to not let that affect our recording <laughs> exactly exactly that yeah, should be good fun all right, so that's going to do us for this week. Uh, we will put up in the Discord an event for that. Uh, Discord now has a function where you can set events in uh, in your server. So we'll put that up so everyone knows when it's going up and, and when to join the channels and all that sort of thing. So if you want to get in on that, if you're listening and you're not already a member of our Discord, then why not? I don't know. I don't understand why not. It is an awesome place to be. We've got tons of really cool people in there. So the link will be in the show notes as it always is. Uh, the link for the historic event is in the show notes as well, so jump in on that. No more leagues this year. This is our last one, but uh, yeah, come and play in the historic event. And there may be another event that we do, uh, you know, more casual thing, just sort of to to wrap up the year. But we'll see how we go. There's also a link in the show notes for our merch store. You can pick up some hoodies and t-shirts and all that sort of stuff to show us some support and show off some sweet Magic Beans gear. Go and check out Josh and Pat's MTG Bazaar on Facebook or go to jpmtgbazaar.com.au. Join up the Facebook group and check out their daily auctions. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter, all of those places where Magic Beans or Magic Beans cast. If you want to find me on Twitter, I am at Peace Inc. Chewy, you are? At Chewy MTG. And Cracker? At Joel Hill underscore. Very good. So that's it from us for this week. Thank you as always for listening. Stay safe out there and we will see you all next time. Mm-hmm.